What's up, everybody? Tasha checking in with another video. And if it's your first time watching me, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. This video is geared towards Love After Lockup. Um, season 5, child, I didn't even get the episode number or the title, but I would drop it in the description. <laughs> Y'all, this video is so late because this weekend was so um interesting. On Friday, I had got sick and my sickness lasts from Friday to Saturday and spilled over into a little bit of Sunday. So I am so late with this video, y'all. But as promised, I will deliver my review. I feel much better now. So let's get into these couples. Um, Thank you all for my new subscribers. Thank you all for my old subscribers. Go ahead and make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe and share this video, y'all. So let's get into it. This episode on a scale of 1 to 10 for me was like a, a 5. You know what I'm saying? It was. It had some good stuff. It had some bad stuff. It had some in between. But, I mean, it was just a 5. It wasn't anything really absolutely overwhelming and things of that nature. Okay? So, let's get into it. First couple I'm going to talk about and get off the brink is Brittany and Key Rocks. And first of all, we TV. We understand that Asante has passed on, right? That he's gone, he's died. But why do they have to put this, this disclaimer up before every episode? And I feel like maybe it's because they're getting new viewers in. And so they have to constantly keep putting that in there. But I'm just kind of like, we know he's gone, things the whole night and I'm kind of like y'all don't have to keep putting that up there but I guess they have to do that as a disclaimer or something I don't know but anyway let's get into the couples Brittany and Key Rocks I'm gonna get them out the way because I don't know if y'all gonna like what I'm about to say but I gotta say what I need to say so anyway the episode opens up when y'all know last week that Key Rocks went to the wrong PO office right and so he had a certain amount of time to get to the next PO office. He was blaming Brittany for getting him to the wrong office. And I'm like, dude, how are you blaming her for getting you to the wrong office when you're the one that just got out of jail? Take accountability for your own actions, okay? I don't know where she got the address from, but I know if I just got out and I got to meet with my PO, I'm going to double, triple, quadruple check that I have the right address so there'd be no hiccups when it's time. Time to go. Matter of fact, I'm going to get up two hours early, make sure we all packed up from the hotel and get on with the get on, you know, but they young and they don't know no better. But what you're not going to do is blame me for your mistakes. Okay. I'm going to tell y'all something. I don't like key rocks. I ain't never said that. I ain't never said that because I was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt, but the way that he behaves, I don't like it. I don't like it at all, and yeah, it's, it's just not, it's not for me. And if y'all, this is my first time in my video, I look down at my notes because I take notes. I know other content creators just be straight on talking, but I like to keep myself on track, so I take notes, even though sometimes I may forget something, but drop in the comments if I do forget something, right? So anyway, um, they're driving over to the next PO place. He's stressing Brittany out while she's driving. I can't stand when people do that. When you're driving and they be like, get over it. Speed up, slow down, do this, y'all. Uh, sidebar, my husband does that sometimes. And I'm like, oh, stop it. <laughs> but I, he don't do it the way that Key Rocks does that. He does it out of love. But I still be like, stop it. I don't like that. But I don't like when people be backseat drivers. And Key Rocks was stressing her out. He was like, slow up. Merge over here. Slow down. Do this. And I was like, dude, he was stressing me out. And I'm watching the daggone thing. Brittany is like, I'm driving. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm getting you this. She's like, you're getting on my nerves. And he like, you getting on my nerves. And I'm like, how is she getting on your nerves when you the one that's acting all crazy and frantic? Okay, a mistake was made. Move on. Get over it. And stop blaming her for the mistake. They get to the PO office. Um, apparently, it was a storm. And the storm caused the power to go out. So they get to the office. He opens the door. He's like, hello, hello. Nobody's answering. Brittany's thinking that the office is closed. No one is there. But it just so happens that a lady comes around and she says, hey, there's somebody around there. And he says, you know, I thought I was late, whatever. They says, no, the power went out the whole night. So he goes in there and he finds out, y'all, get this. He has to stay on parole until 20 60. <clears throat> so for your whole life, basically, he cannot leave 
the state of Richmond. I think that's where they're at, Richmond. And y'all, if y'all ain't never been to Richmond, let me tell y'all something. It is, to me, the most boring area. Now, if it has jumped up from the time that I lived there for a snippet, somebody in the comments, please let me know. But Richmond is so boring. It's like watching paint dry. And if somebody told me I had to stay in Richmond and could not leave until 2060, child, I would just go ahead and, and, and just be out of it. <laughs> Maybe stuff has changed. Maybe they do have stuff to do. I don't know. But I was bored to tears, child, when I lived there. I lived there back when I was um, going to college and I wanted to go to Virginia Commonwealth. And so I had moved in with my grandparents and I lived there for a month. It did not work out. <laughs> it did not work out. Um personal issues um and so i had to end up moving back to dc because that's where i'm from and so dc is 10 times better 10 times better <laughs> even though it's only two hours from richmond y'all i'm telling y'all it's a whole new world richmond is boring to me now people that's from there may know what to do and how to keep it moving anyway i digress um, it's raining. Kira, she calls and she's like, oh my gosh, it's getting bad out here. So it's raining outside. She calls Kira and says, hey, are you done with your PO and everything? And Kira is like, yeah, I'm done. You don't see me bring the umbrella. Now, mind you, mind you, paint this picture. We saw last week what Brittany had on. She had this cute little uh dress outfit or whatever, had on some, those clear heels. You know, she looked cute. She dressed appropriately for her age. She looked cute. Um, You want me, sir, to now get out of the car and go to help get you with an umbrella. And I got on heel sandals. Uh, No, ma'am. We not doing that. Wouldn't have been me. I wouldn't have got out the car. But again, Brittany's young. I'm not going to say dumb because I don't think she's dumb. But she's very naive and green when it comes to Key Rocks. And she needs to wake up because he getting on my nerves for real. So... She get out the car with the umbrella. She's talking some, oh, I'm coming. She get out the car. I was like, uh, Kira's talking about some. She walking all in the puddles and stuff, getting her pretty feet wet and all this stuff. And I'm like, where you think she was going to walk? It's raining cats, dogs, puppies, um, bears and tarantulas and everything. Where'd you think she was going to walk? So she goes with the umbrella. She goes to the front to get Key Rocks. And Kira says, are we going to play a game? I'm going to pick you up and hold the umbrella over. So she all giddy. <laughs> and he holding her. They go into the car. She get in the car. Then he get in the car. What gave me pause was, dude, you got a low cut cut. You know what I'm saying? If you were a woman, right? You know how black women are about their hair. And when we used to get perms, perms like that. And some still do. But natural has taken over. <laughs> And you know, when we used to, when it used to rain, we'd turn into a cat. We'd be like, oh shoot, we need an umbrella. We need a bag over our hair. We need something. So we would make sure that we had, you know, our hair covered. But if you are natural, low cut, whatever, if you don't run to that car real quick, you freaking sit up here. He rolled up his pants and stuff so they don't get wet and all that. But you got her getting out the car, walking in her open toe sandals. Like, walking in open toe sandals, child, when it's raining is the worst. Your feet be sliding and everything. No. No, ma'am. It wouldn't have been me. Another part of manipulation that I feel that he does to Britney. He's so aggressive. And y'all, I don't know if it's because of the testosterone that Kirok is taking that is making him act like a jerk. Okay. But yeah, <laughs> moving on, moving on. Um, what else? He says he's more like a protector for Britney, right? He's one of those protective partners. In my opinion, it's giving me aggression. And not only is it giving me aggression, okay? He gives me signs of a person that will if, if, afflict, afflict DV on an individual. And I'm going to put it out there and say that. If you don't like it, drop it in the comments. We can have a conversation. I love you pieces too. Um, But he gives me that. He gives me that for her. And I don't like it. Um... He says the PO also told Key Ross if he clean up his act and he get a job and he do what he need to do, blah, 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 the parole may change. It may not last until 2060, but child, that 2060 made me fall out my chair. I was like, woo. So they go to meet up with his mentor. Y'all, these 
this hair is still in. But I was sick. I was supposed to take this hair out over the weekend. But, y'all, I was sick. So, I'm like, you know what? It don't stink like that and everything. I'm cool. I make sure I do my dry shampoo and take care of it and everything until I can get it out. And I, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> digress again so he meets up with his mentor coffee and coffee or they call her cough drop when she was um locked up she is the wife of um his prison mom or something like that so Coffee was a mentor. Whenever Key Rock said he would get irritated or whatever, he would call Coffee, and Coffee would be someone that he could confide in, talk in, talk him off the ledge the whole nine. Um, they're sitting at the table, and Coffee's like, So, what's your plans now that you out? Blah, blah, blah. Key Rock, y'all, get this. Get this. Key Rock says, I'm going to work on my. First of all, he said he wants to get rid of the boobs, right? He wants to have the breast removal. Then he goes and says, I want to work on my gospel, gospel rap career. I'm going to let that marinate. Gospel rap career. We are talking about a transgender male I think that's the way you say it. I'm not sure. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Talking about, I want to be a gospel rapper. He goes on further to say that people should accept him for the spirit and not the flesh. Let me tell y'all something. We about to get real nitty gritty. I'm a Christian. Love the Lord all day, every day. Um, I grew up in church. Um, I still go to church. I love the Lord and I'm not ashamed to say it. And I would never be ashamed to say it ever, ever, ever. I don't care if somebody holds a daggone fire stick to my face. I love the Lord. I'm going to always say that. I'm going to say this. The church is flawed. They do have a lot of flaws within the church that I have seen personally. And that has not deterred me from my relationship with God because it's a relationship. It's a one-on-one -on -one thing. I don't look at people. I look at God. I don't care what nobody's wearing, what they doing, who they sleeping with, or the whole nine, all of that stuff. That's them. They got to deal with God with that, right? It's me and God. This is our relationship. So whatever's going on in the church, people say, oh, the church got this and this, and they judge the church. Yes, the church is filled with imperfect people serving a perfect God. So of course you are going to have flaws, right? However, if you think that it is going to, it's hard for people to accept who you are as an individual on the outside, go ahead and mess with the gospel industry and see how you are going to have a hard time being a gospel artist with what you are presenting. Just like any industry, you won't have to prove yourself. The gospel industry is no different. If you are a secular artist and you come over into the gospel industry, you won't have to prove yourself to them. They're not going to be just so accepting, like, come on in. You know what I'm saying? You may have a hit, hook up with somebody and have a hit or something. But to have longevity, they're selling to the people, the Christians. And for you to be an artist that Christians rock with and bump with, you cannot have people who are serving a God who makes no mistakes, right? Kiros made a comment and said that he does not feel that he was born the way that he should have been born. But God makes no mistakes, right? You cannot put that persona out there and your thoughts out there about how you feel. And this is his feelings. Hey, that's your feelings. But you can't go into an industry that completely abides by the tone that the LGBTQ AI plus community does not line up with the word of God. You can't come in there thinking you're going to be openly accepted, especially when you know you got issues already being accepted by society, that whole community, y'all know that. And you want to go into the gospel industry? Sir, you got a robe. You got a robe. I don't know if this video even going to make it. <laughs> I'm doing my review, but hopefully 
YouTube lets me post it. But I said what I said, and I'm not going to apologize because it's real talk. I like to keep it 100. I'm not going to sugarcoat nothing. I am who I am, right? Key Rocks is who he is. But baby, the way you were saying you want to come into an industry that you know, don't. How can I say this? That you know that they live by a certain code and creed. And, and and um model after who they serve. I don't know if that's gonna work out. All these other content creators, I, I watch other content creators um reviews and things like that, and they're saying, Oh, good for Key, Key Rocks. I hope he do stick with that, blah blah blah. Don't play, don't play, don't play. If the world barely accepts your transition. How the heck you think a gospel, the gospel genre is just going to be like, come on in. You're going to have a hard road. I'm telling you. And this is coming from somebody who does not hate you because I love everybody, right? Don't hate you, but I'm going to keep it 100. If you ever come across my video, video key runs, you can do what you want to do. Trust and believe. But I'm just saying that industry right there, that industry right there, you're going to have a hard road. A hard road. Especially, you're going to have a hard road. I'm going to leave it like that. Um, He says that he wants to get the breast removed, of course. And, um, you know, Coffee then says, you don't need to have nothing removed. Just work out. You're not big. Work out. Don't have no surgeries, blah, blah, blah. But Key Rock's mind is bent on having this breast removal surgery. And he wants to get that done. Um... He says that people should accept him, right? Brittany says, you know, I feel that because he also made a comment about Brittany's parents and stuff not accepting her. And Brittany says, which I thought was a very mature response. She says that, you know, my mom don't accept me, but she's my mom and I still love her and I have to give her time. I have to give her time to accept us. You know, they're Catholic. They were, they're uh, brought up in that religion and everything. And I have to give her time. And I thought, in my opinion, that was a very mature response, even though Key Rocks was still like, well, they need to accept. Blah, blah, blah. Sir, again, you are talking to her parents or you're trying to get in good with her parents who are Catholic. You can't sit up here and think that they're supposed to just be like, welcome in. And in my opinion, they're slowly but surely coming around to accepting Britney. Let them come in their own time. You have to understand, they raised this girl in the Catholic church, okay? They do not shine upon your community. So you can sit up here and think that they're just going to be like, welcome in. Brittany made such a mature, good point. You got to give them time. And I think that's what irritated me about him. Like his aggression and his way that he is. It just makes people think that they got, you will set me. And if you don't set me, there's something wrong with you. Why is something got to be wrong with the other person? If I have a religion and a faith and I believe a certain thing, that's me. Don't judge me. Just like that community community doesn't want to be judged why do you then turn around and judge her parents for not accepting you they're catholic you got to give them time just like she said and then after they leave with coffee fast forward all of that they was just shooting a breeze whatever coffee saying it's a good time to be gay blah 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 and then they get over to an ice cream shop the ice cream shop, Brittany is up in there still talking about having a baby. Brittany, you need to pump your brakes, okay? You, I know you want to have this baby, this life, this, this picket fence and all this stuff and the rainbows and sunshine and all of that. It's not going to be what you think, man, because I firmly believe that you need to kick Key Rocks to the curb. Curb. Quickly. Because he's aggressive. Very aggressive. He talks to you crazy. He treats you crazy. On the glimmer of times when he does kind of act like he cares about you and protective of you and everything, that's still met with some form of aggression. I don't like it.